let us start lecture 6, the course is corrosion protection methods. And the topic for today's discussion, in fact, for next couple of lectures, we have corrosion control by uh, design modification. And while we do this design modification, we will also take care of geometry. In fact, geometry would become one part of this design modification. Now, let us list down some of the basic factors, which can influence design. Let us talk about environment. When we talk about environment, it can be natural, it can be plant environment or it could be the environment a material experience when it is stored, storage or during transit. Now, let us say in natural environment, let us say air movement. So, if you talk about air movement, let us say we have two chimneys, industrial chimneys and if air movement is in that particular locality, air movement is this way and if we create chimneys like this. So, these are two chimneys. And whenever there is air movement, definitely there will be air bond particulate movement. And you could see that this is natural air movement in that locality. So, this particular chimney, see this is short, whatever gases does are, those are coming out along with particulate, they will hit on this particular wall part of the second the second chimney which is which whose height is more than the chimney on the left so then this particular segment would be experiencing good amount of wear as well as there could be possibility of excessive corrosion so this is one such example so we have to talk about this. For example, plant, some plant we can have let us say a plant which is manufacturing electronic packaging plant. The plant should be very clean as well as not much of dirt and dust, but whereas if you consider a foundry, typical foundry, cast iron foundry, you will have lot of uh, fumes as well as dust that dust can contain graphite particles, sand particles, all those things will be there and depending on that, the effect of that environment on the corrosion of materials would be different. And now coming to storage as well as transit, let us say one particular item is tra uh, transferred from one end to another and during that transfer, if it experiencing experiences she water atmosphere as well as the dry atmosphere, all those varied atmosphere, definitely the corrosion pattern would change at every section, every sessions. So, generally the careful, one has to be careful when uh, shipment is done uh, from one continent to another continent. Okay. So, that time most of the time those materials, those packages are actually uh, on the ship and that ship is traveling to, through sea water. So, the salt corrosion could be another issue. 
so that in the storage or the packaging should be such that salt water should not enter into those boxes. This is environment and accordingly we have to change the design. Here the design could be how to uh, seal it properly as well as how to have proper blockage of sea water spray the salt spray onto those boxes. Now, second is stress. So, this stress could be of varied nature like if we talk about residual stress. So, the residual stress could be coming from a treatment. Okay. It can happen due to phase transformation, during cooling as well as this can also happen during fabrication. Okay. So, those residual stresses which are built up in the material and they, those stresses can lead to stress corrosion cracking it can lead to corrosion fatigue those stress can also lead to hydrogen induced cracking if there are possibilities of hydrogen evolution or hydrogen ion reduction. So, then the stress could be alternating. So, this is during operation. An alternative stress could be different nature. For example, if this is the stress axis, this is the time, it could be like this, this is 0, it could be like this or it could be like this or there could be possibility like one can have a long thing like this, all those stress modulation can be possible during operation and those stress modulation whenever those are those are present and if corrosive environments are there, then one big way to have failure is corrosion fatigue. Okay. So, that is a catastrophic failure of a material. Now, that means, we have to look at the design aspect of it. Three, we can have shape and when we talk about shape, we talk about geometry. So, when you talk about geometry, that can be joint geometry like rivet joint, bolted joint, welded joint, okay. all sort of possibilities are there. Then flanges, so flanges basically from water tank, if we have a pipeline system. So, we have to have flanges to take water from one end to the other. Okay. So, the flanges design is very critical. We will see one such failure that if we have dissimilar metals in the flange joints, then those dissimilar metal one metal which is active compared to other and the active metal area is less than the noble metal area then the active metal can go a high degree of corrosion. 
For example, if we use, use copper flanges and then steel bolts, the steel bolt will corrode heavily and then flange can loosen. So, that flanges design. So, then we can also think of crevice. Okay. So, depending on the design aspect, we can avoid crevice or a crevice can be present. Then deposit. So, let us say water tank, if the design is such that water retention is possible and the particles which are suspended in water, if they settle down at the bottom of the tank, those will create deposit and that, depo that deposit can actually lead to pitting corrosion. At the same time, they can also lead to crevice corrosion. Okay. So, we have to also think of design modification of the in terms of shape, so that we can drain those deposit quickly without having too much of retention. Then liquid entrapment. So, the design should be such that even during rain water, we should not that see the design should not be such that it retains water at localized portion. Okay. For example, if we have a kind of a slope design like this. So, that means water if you look at this particular portion, if water is rain water is coming like this. So, there could be water retention in those portions there we can have water retention. So, the best design would be like this. Okay. So, that means, even if the rain water comes, it will not retain water on those small, small places, wherever those hinges are coming. Now, fourth is compatibility. Compatibility I would say more in terms of corrosion language, galvanic couple or I would say avoidance of galvanic, galvanic couple. Now, when we talk about compatibility, it actually indicates galvanic compatibility or I would say instead of couple, I can say compatibility. It says that metals and metal, metal or alloy, those components, if there are multiple components attached to a single segment, then there should be galvanic compatibility, galvanic effect should be minimum. What does it mean? That means, the position of those alloy components, which are in contact with each other, they should be close to each other in the galvanic series. The best possibility is if we can make them from the same alloy, all those components, at times it is very difficult to do that. So, then the next possibility is make sure that those components are sitting close to each other in that galvanic series. We will have a discussion on that. So, we are just mentioning some of the factors and that would influence the design. Then movement. So, movement when we talk about movement, we talk about a fluid movement. Many instances of our corrosion events, we have flow, fluid flow and if we talk about aqueous solution, 
pipeline corrosion. Okay. So, that is basically decided by the fluid flow, even tank, okay. tank corrosion if it is stagnant, if it is flowing water the corrosion pattern would be different. So, what influence it would it would have like flowing liquid and if we talk about aqueous medium, let me just mention since we are more concerned about aqueous medium in this particular uh, discussion, aqueous medium. So, this is a part where through which or the pipeline through which water is flowing. So, there could be parts which are actually moving in water. like impeller blade or pump blade. So, those are the cases and at times we have to also when we talk about flowing liquid, we have to also see its viscosity, particulate content all those factors, all those things are to be decided, all are, are to be considered for designing a suitable material for those components. Then six is temperature. When we talk about temperature, high temperature, low temperature, generally what happens if we increase temperature by 10 degree or 20 degree, there could be a huge degree of corrosion, increase in corrosion rate. At the same time, if we have high temperature, there could be possibility of polarity reversal, like zinc coating. Generally, zinc coating on iron, zinc acts as a anodic component. That means, zinc dissolves and gives sacrificial protection to iron component. But if temperature goes beyond around 70 to 80 degree Celsius, then zinc oxide forms and once zinc oxide forms, the zinc oxide would act as cathode, iron would act as anode. So, then zinc oxide, zinc that particular coating will not give protection to the underlying iron pipe rather iron pipe will quickly corrode and that to localize corrosion because as we have mentioned that the galvanization becomes effective when there is a scratch or in discontinuity in the layer. So, that particular segment is exposed and that particular part when that exposure happens that underlying iron exposure happens to the environment, zinc actually comes up and then gives sacrificial protection, but when temperature goes up because of the polarity reversal iron corrodes in that localized portion. So, the temperature actually leads to oxidation and when we talk about oxidation we are talking about scale formation, then temperature can also have heat transfer. effects. Okay. Then there could be possibility of condensation as well as there would be effect on dew point depending on the humidity contained as well as temperature of that atmosphere. So, those will again will have a different effect. So, we have to also look at the design part in those situations. Control, this is also another factor. So, what do we mean by control? The control is like we are talking about 
quality control. Let us say we are checking a surface. So, the surface can have scratches and we have to be careful whether the scratch is some built up scratch during operation or sometimes we actually put some mark there to indicate for example, company mark on top of it. So, we should be careful that whether this is scratch coming from operation or it is already inbuilt scratch when it was first uh, or the marking uh, when it was first installed. Okay. So, that is basically quality control okay, or control part. Similarly, let us say when we paint some object, we should be careful that the surface is properly prepared. If the surface is has dirts, surface has scales, surface has uh, oxide films at some localized portion, then definitely that painting will not last long, it will fail quickly. So, again those design aspects will come into picture. So, that means we call we can say that it is a surface cleaning, we can say the surface preparation. Surface preparation indicates cleaning or washing if you include all those cleaning or washing that is included. So, at times not only a physical cleaning means we must go for a very hard cleaning okay, like sandblasting. So, mopping is one thing and sandblasting is another thing. So, okay, sometimes we have to go for sandblasting to remove uh, uh, the scales or uh, grease. Uh, for example, if we have grease, we have to clean properly, washing properly. So, cleaning or washing we can put it in separately. So, like cleaning also this washing let us say there are grease, grease layers on top of it. So, we must wash properly preferably by water, alcohol all those washings will be required or mopping. Sometimes cleaning could be hard cleaning. So, hard cleaning means by doing sandblasting or uh, cleaning by emery paper, all those kind of stuff might be needed before you do coating. Okay. So, this is needed for coating, coating life will be decided by that. Then we have cathodic protection. Cathodic protection is there are two types one is ICCP which is impressed current cathodic protection and the second one is sacrificial anode. In both the cases regular inspection is needed. So, one such possibility of failure that can happen let us say a pipeline is protected by a sacrificial anode. And if the sacrificial for example, this sacrificial anode is designed in such a fashion, there should be a particular length, there should be a particular diameter let us say if it is a cylindrical. Now, by some and this is actually placed below the earth surface. So, that means, it is in the soil or in the water. Now, by chance if it is broken. So, once it is broken, so that means, we are not able to give the complete protection to that metal object. If we do not inspect, then this can lead to a serious damage to the part which is to be protected. So, we again talk about it when we talk about cathodic protection separately. Then we have inhibitor. So, inhibitor are basically uh, chemical components organic or inorganic those are added at a small at a small dose in the electrolyte or sometime inhibitors can also be there in the paint. We can say inhibitor impregnated paint those inhibitors we have to also carefully observe the inhibitor action. 
So, again that particular part we will discuss when we talk inhibitor uh, in later lectures. And then every time we see that inspection, and this should be regular and planned. Fine. So, these are the some of the factors which can influence the design aspect of materials, rather design aspect of instruments and components. Even the plant design can vary depending on that. So, whatever we have discussed, so these are the ideas we have got. So, let me just mention this uh, particular source material. I would request you to go, if you find that source that will be great. So, that source material is basically ASM handbook. Source material, corrosion, fundamentals, testing, and protection. And this is ASM and book volume thirteen A. So, most of the things are taken from there, but you will see that in age every aspect will have some sort of examples in our subsequent lectures. So, we will take up the second aspect, which is basically the failures that can occur due to improper design. So, till then thank you.